Just wanted to talk about if you have one of the new DJI drones like the Neo 2 uh, and do any type of uh, work on YouTube, there's a good chance you're committing a crime as far as the uh, FFA is concerned. Most of these small drones like this um, don't have a remote ID enabled in the United States. So most countries, the remote ID will work with these, uh, but in the USA, it's disabled and won't broadcast at all. So if you look at most of these YouTube channels that are um, doing any kind of reviews of these or just action shots with them, and they're monetized, they're actually committing a crime if they don't have an, uh, a remote ID enabled on it. So unless you see uh, one of these flying and it has one of the small stick-on remote IDs, I'll put a link to what they look like in the description, um, you're actually committing a crime. So if you want to do anything, even um, to post these on Facebook, that sort of thing, the videos from the flights, uh, if you do it for a friend, say even your church, like they ask you to shoot some video and put on their church Facebook page, uh, it can actually be considered uh, not recreational anymore because you're actually doing this for someone else. Um, and they're putting it on, say, a Facebook page and draw in patroners. Uh, that's not considered recreational anymore. So you're actually uh, committing a crime as far as the FFA is concerned. All it takes is one person to report you. Uh, and they look into those even just from one report. So if you uh, have this, don't have remote ID uh, mounted on here and people can see that, somebody's liable to report you. Um, and Anything like if you're monetized or just hope to be monetized with your YouTube video, you can get in trouble. It doesn't, you don't have to already be monetized. If um, you're using this drone footage uh, to get viewers with the hopes of eventually being monetized, you can actually get in trouble for that. So with these, anything commercial, you're going to have to have it registered. So you, at a bare minimum, you have to have it registered. You've got to have your part 107 and you've got to have remote ID working on it to use this for uh, any commercial YouTube videos. And if you look, uh, I haven't seen anybody, even in the U.S. or anywhere else, flying these with a remote ID strapped on the back. It has remote ID built into it, and it can be turned on by software. But in the United States, it's not. Uh, so you're really flying illegally to do that. So... If uh, anybody else has any work around that, you're welcome to comment below and we can talk about it. Um, but you've got to be really careful with these and many of the other small drones. So a lot of the Mavic Minis, they don't broadcast remote ID either. So if you're using those uh, and putting videos on a monetized YouTube channel, uh, you can also uh, get a minimum $10,000 fine that they can levy on you and all it takes is just one person reporting it. So I'll put a link to a remote ID if you want to fly legally. Um, you really need to put one of those external ones on that strap on since these don't use remote ID and it makes it easy to spot you because if you're doing a video talking about it, people can see whether you have that remote ID built on it. And if it's in the United States, the FFA can look at it and just immediately see that you're not uh, flying within regulations on it. And they can uh, actually come and check on you, come to your house and um, go through your video footage. There's a lot of things they can do that people don't realize if they really uh, want to put it to that. And most of the time they won't mess with you at all. But if you have one person and that's, like I said, all it takes is one person reports you, uh, they'll look into that and it doesn't take long for them to basically end up having to take your YouTube channel down, erase all of the footage that you've had and go through a lot of work and uh, fun times you've had ruined just because of that. Now you can still fly recreational without any issues and recreational is basically you going and flying around the neighborhood and that sort of thing um, with no intention to ever make any money on it. And like I said, that includes monetizing the YouTube channel. So you got to be real careful. It's really worth going to the FFA website and reading through exactly what you can do with it. But also one 
thing a lot of people get in trouble with. Um, you can't fly over people or moving cars. And I see that a lot in YouTube videos. Um, if you fly over a moving car or people at all, even though this is under 250 grams, it must be registered and you must have remote ID on it or you can't fly over the people and it's got to have protected props on it. So that's one thing they really talk up with these that they've got protected props and it's safe to fly under people with it being over under 250 grams. Um, but without having it registered and without having a remote ID, uh, you can't fly over people or ca moving cars at all. And like I said, this doesn't have a remote ID. So if you see somebody that doesn't have an external remote ID on there, they're taking footage with it, flying over crowds, uh, people in cars and stuff like that. They're doing it illegally. And actually you, the likelihood of getting in trouble slim. But if you have a big enough YouTube channel, you know, like I said, just one person reporting you and flying over a crowd, flying over a moving car, and that includes your own moving car. So if you do and follow footage and have it over the top of your car, um, you can get in trouble for that. So just think about that before you get too far into this. Um, if whether your drone has remote ID, you have it registered, you have your part uh, 107 on it and get everything together before you actually start posting these things or you can find yourself in a world of trouble so uh, please comment on anything you have to say about it or questions and we can talk about it i'll post some links to the lightest weight um, remote ids some of these new remote ids are really light and they'll work on these things so you know around 13 and a half uh, grams with the lighter ones they used to be in the 50 gram range and they would affect the flight of a little uh, drone like this but since they're only about 13 and a half grams uh, they're okay now on here you really won't even notice them on there they're quite a bit uh, less expensive than they used to be so it's not that cheap to get in ff faa compliance uh, to where you don't find yourself in trouble so if this helped you out at all please like and subscribe thanks for watching